Supporters of Nabil Karui were celebrating like he'd already won the presidential election. But they're just happy he'll be able to compete on a level playing field. Despite being in prison, Karui was the runner-up in the first round of the ballot last month. Now that he's been released, his supporters are confident he can win Sunday's runoff. A lot of work awaits us now. We have to stick together. We're certain that we will win. Karui owns one of Tunisia's most watched news outlets and is known for his philanthropy. He's promised to alleviate poverty and revive the economy. But corruption allegations, which Karui has denied, have clouded his election campaign. The media mogul is going up against frontrunner and conservative law professor Kai Said, who has appealed to young voters and the working class. The independent candidate has pledged to create jobs and rewrite the constitution to give more power to local councils. He's also got the backing of the Ennada party, which has won the most seats in parliament. We dream of elevating and changing this country for future generations, for the young people and not for us. We want our country to be among the best in the world. But Tunisia has a long way to go. Whoever wins Sunday's vote will have a big job ahead of them, starting with the economy. Tunisia's GDP grew only 1.1% in the first half of this year, compared to 2.7% in the same period a year earlier. Inflation has risen to 7%, its highest level in nearly three decades, while the cost of living has jumped by 30% in the past three years. Unemployment levels remain above 15%, even though one in every three job seekers has a university degree. The two contenders are expected to lay out how they plan to tackle those issues when they face off for the first time in a televised debate on Friday. Laila Humaira, TRT World. For more on this story, let's speak to Mohamed Dahia Hamami, who's a political analyst specialising in Tunisia. Mohamed, tell me, Nabil Karoui, he has maintained a lot of public support, even though he spent so much time in jail. Do you think his release is going to radically change how the final days of this campaign plays out? Well, just like the first round of the presidential election, we still don't know who will win. Um, the fact that he was released from jail may or may not affect his popularity. There are other, actually other news that came up recently that might affect the election. There was an interview with the lobbyist that they contracted that was released. Today, there are other factors like the mobilization on the ground of his supporters and Kai Saeed supporters. So nothing is played yet, even though um, it's clear that Nabil Karwi's resources are much more um, sophisticated and advanced than uh, Kai Saeed. So he's been released, but these charges haven't been thrown out. So what happens? I mean, if he does get elected on the weekend and then he has to return to court and is found guilty, what kind of predicament does that leave Tunisian politics in? Well, if he's elected, he won't go back to court because all the procedures uh, will be suspended until he finishes his mandate. Um, the question is, uh, will he go back to jail if he doesn't win the election? Because the, because the court decision that was issued yesterday is only about a temporary release. None of the procedures and none of the investigation were suspended until now. He can uh, escape uh, only if he gets elected and gets the presidential immunity. He has a lot riding on this weekend outcome. Now, we are expecting a, uh, a candidate's debate, uh, the first time that these two candidates will be able to face off against each other. Do we have any hints yet as to what economic policies and plans we might see? Because that is one thing Tunisia needs. Yes. So uh, the first thing to mention is that the president normally is not supposed to uh, meddle in economic policies. It's not in his prerogatives because normally his prerogatives are limited to foreign policy and defense. But both of them have very different views. Nabil Kari wants to expand the concept of national security to include what he calls economic security, and he wants to, he wants to pass certain laws that, according to him, will increase the, the living standards of the poorest um, 
parts of the, of the population. However, uh, he remains still a pro-business person. On the other side, Qais Saeed has been very critical toward the past 1960, uh, 1986 econ neoliberal economic policies that were adopted by mainly the Ben Ali regime. And we saw in an, in an interview in the very beginning of the first round of presidential campaign, him talking about the role, an increasing role of the state in the economy. He was even referring to this a period of the 60s that some people would describe as a, the short socialist experience in Tunisia. So we are facing totally different views, but it's very unclear how each of them will be able to transform their views into real economic policies. It's going to be a very interesting outcome. Mohamed Dahia Hamami from, joining us from Connecticut, thank you for your time.